In this video, I'm going to run through Chapter 2 from Photoshop's Classroom in a Book. I'm not going to go through everything step by step. Instead, I'm going to focus on the areas that I think could use some elaboration. And in other cases, I might even show you an alternate way to do something, a way that I prefer over the way the book has demonstrated it. You should watch this lesson first and then read the chapter and go through all the steps in the chapter as they're outlined there. Starting from the section in the book that says opening a file with Adobe Bridge, instead of going to Photoshop first and then browsing Bridge from there as it's outlined in the book, I'm going to take the folder Lesson 2, which contains the files, and I'm just going to take that folder and drag it directly on top of my Bridge icon, and that will launch Bridge and take me directly to the contents of that folder. I'm viewing the contents of the Lesson 2 folder with the Essentials panel in Bridge. This is the same um, as the book shows. We can see that there's three images in this folder. We're going to be working on this old photo here, and the one that says O2 End is what it uh, should look like when we're done. We're going to start with the one that says O2 Start. Now, I prefer to look at these together and compare the before and after by switching to the Film Strip mode. In the Film Strip mode, we can select both of the um, End Image and the Start Image. By holding the Shift key down, we can select both of those and then view them side by side in a nice big preview pane. And I'll slide this up over here so they get even bigger. Slide this down. So we can see that we're going to start with kind of a yellow tinted scanned photograph that has some damage in it. And first we're going to crop and straighten the image. And then we're going to fix the tones. I'll take this video to that point of the chapter. And then the next video after that will do the retouching where we take this guy out and fix this scratch down here. To open an image from Bridge, you need to double click on it in the content pane, not the preview pane. I'm going to pull this up to make the content pane bigger and select just the O2 start file and double click on it. And that will open it up in Photoshop. The first thing that we want to do is save this as a new file under File, Save As. If we started working on this and making changes and then just simply did a file save, we would overwrite the start file and then we wouldn't be able to go back and start over. So do a File, Save As. Change the name from O2 Start to O2 Working. And change the format from TIFF to Photoshop and then click the Save. You can put it right back in the same folder where you started. Now I'm in the section of the chapter that says Straightening and Cropping an Image with Photoshop. In the book it says to go to the Crop Tool, which is the fifth one down here. And if you hover over this, or click and hold down, you'll see that the shortcut key for the Crop Tool is the C, so that makes a lot of sense. In the book, it tells us to go to Width and Height times Resolution. Put in 7 inches by 7 inches by 200 pixels per inch. What the book doesn't tell you is that when you do Width times Height times Resolution, you put in a resolution, you're going to be scaling the image. In this case, we actually scale the image down. There's almost no circumstance where I would scale an image on the front end of working on it. I would do all of my work and then decide at the end that I needed to make it smaller. I don't want to throw information away when I don't know for sure I might not need it later. So I think that's an important piece of information that's missing from the book. The next thing is we're going to go to the Straighten tool, which is right here on the top. And we're going to pick the Straighten Tool. And the Straighten Tool works by putting a line on an edge that should be straight. So you can do that vertically or horizontally. I'll grab or click on the left corner of this, drag a line out, and I want to line this up with the edge of the photo. And as soon as I release, the image is going to be straightened out. Now I'll just grab these handles and, and drag them in till I get to the edge. 
of the um, image to crop it in nice and let's go all the way to the image here. Now there's one really important thing before I commit this is I want to make sure that I look up here and I see that delete crop pixels is unchecked because I want to be able to change my mind maybe or come back and if I committed this and that was turned on it would throw away all the pixels outside of here. So I'm happy with that. I can commit this crop by clicking on the big check up here or hitting the enter key or the return key on my keyboard. Notice that the image scaled down when that was committed because it was throwing pixels away. Now I'm jumping to the section that says adjusting the color and tone. We're going to start by adding a curves adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are very powerful ways to edit your images non-destructively. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to double click on the properties panel here to collapse it so that I can see more of my layers panel. Now the book has us add a curves adjustment layer by finding the curve icon in this adjustment panel here. It's the third one. If we hover over these you'll see the name change. I don't use these icons too often because I don't have them all committed to memory. I, I prefer another method which is at the bottom of the layers panel right down in the center is a circle that's half black and half white. If I click on that I'll get a pop-up menu that lists all of the available adjustment layers by name which I find a lot easier to find. So I'm going to pick the curves adjustment layer and that added um, a layer that says curves above the layer zero which is where the image is. There's a third way to add an adjustment layer in Photoshop. You'll find that pretty much everything that you learn in Photoshop has at least one extra way to do something. Sometimes there's many many ways to do the same thing. If you go up to layer in the uh, menu up here and go down to new adjustment layer all those adjustment layers are listed here the same as we found from the bottom of the layers panel. So if I picked curves from here it would add another curves layer but we don't need two curves layer so I'm going to do a, con a command Z or control Z if you on a PC to delete that. I want to be able to see the whole properties panel here that shows us the curve and since I've already said I don't use these adjustments I'm going to pull this panel off and click the X here so it'll go away. So now I can make this a little bit taller. I'm recording this on a lower resolution monitor so that it'll view better for you when you're watching the video but that means I have less real estate to work with on my screen here. But now we can see the entire curve and this layer contains the information in this window. We haven't moved anything or changed anything here so it's not changing the way the image looks. Now the most simple and basic way to think about a curve is that if you move it up like a light switch that slides you'll lighten it. So I'm going to just click on the center of this curve and move up and you'll see the image get brighter and if I move down you'll see it get darker, darker just like a light switch works. I'm going to zoom in on this image a little doing a command plus uh, so that we can see it better. Um, if I want to get rid of this um, this handle that I put on the curve because I don't really want to make this darker I can just drag it off and it'll go away and now it's returned back to where it was to begin with. So in the book um, we're going to set a white point and this is your shadow and this is your midtone and this is your highlight. What this is going to do when you pick an area on the image. We're going to click that to load it into the cursor and you'll see that this changes to an eyedropper. When we click someplace on this image it's like telling Photoshop that's the spot that should be white and not just white but balanced white. This image has kind of a yellow cast to it. When we pick something to be white it's going to make it white and it's going to balance the color tones in it. I'm going to zoom in using my command and spacebar to temporarily switch to the 
zoom tool and I'll scrub you to the right to zoom in and I want to get in really close here to make sure I pick the right spot. As we get in close you can see all the pixels in this image. I'm going to select a white spot on her dress here and you'll see that the entire image started to brighten up. Let's do a command or a control zero to fit the whole thing back in the window and we'll see that the yellow cast is pretty much gone and the image is much brighter. So we accomplished two things by picking a white point. We fixed the, um, the white balance and we brighten the image. Anytime you add an adjustment layer to an image, you are non-destructively changing the way that the, re the original pixels look. If I turn the visibility off on this curves adjustment layer by clicking on the eyeball here, you'll see that that edit's hidden and we see the image in its original state. Uh, nothing's been changed, none of the pixels have changed. If I click on the visibility icon again and we turn that edit back on, we can see how the image brightens back up. You can think of this curve adjustment layer as a light that's shining down onto the pixels in the image layer below. Now I'm going to throw this curve away and, uh, and try this again to show you a couple other things. To throw away this curves layer, I'm going to click right on the um, part where it shows the curve and I'm going to click and hold and drag down to the trash can in the lower right. And so now we're back to where we started. And I'll add a curves again. We're starting over here. And pick my white point. And this time I'm not going to zoom in and I'm just going to click some area in here. And I didn't pick the right area and it got way too bright because I didn't pick the right white. Let's try that again. I'll do a command Z and this time I'll pick the yellow color over here. And that should really whack the image color out because what I did by picking on his shorts is I, I told the curve make that point I picked the white and it moved everything else to balance with that. But that doesn't, that's not supposed to be white. So let's do a command Z again. It's important then when you use the white picker that you pick something in the image that is supposed to be white. And a lot of times you've got to zoom in to see that. So we'll pick that, go back to uh, fit and window with uh, command zero and now the image looks good again. The book has us add a levels adjustment layer on top of the curves adjustment layer. Before I add that levels adjustment layer I want to point something out here. If you look inside of this properties panel for the curve the light gray area represents the histogram of the image. In the histogram is like a measure for the tones how much of each tone exists in that image. It's starting from the left, these are the dark tones, and on the right side are the light tones. You'll see this spike here. That represents all of this light area of the sky, and that's why it spikes up so high because there's a lot of it. And then these tones over here are the darker shadow tones. Now let's go and add a levels adjustment layer. Again, I'm going to click on this circle here on the bottom. This time we'll pick levels. And if we look in the levels, it also has a histogram. It's kind of squashed down compared to the curves, but it's the same. We see the spike on the right hand side and we see the um, curves here on the left that are the um, shadow areas. So both the levels and the curves are showing you the histogram of the image. And they do essentially the same things, but the curve gives you more control because you can bend your edits. This is the shadow here on the left hand side and this is the highlight here on the right hand side. Now our shadow or our dark pixels aren't going all the way to the edge and that says we don't have a black. If I move this triangle to the right, right where that histogram comes down, you'll see the image will get darker in the shadow areas. If I grab the center triangle and I move it to the right, it's going to get darker in the midtone areas. And this is what the book tells us to do. If I move the triangle to the left, it's going to get brighter. So to the right makes it darker and to the left makes it brighter. And that ends the first half of chapter two. We'll pick up the second half of chapter two in another video.